If you've been doing video editing for a while, you're probably sick of doing boring, repetitive tasks like cutting out bad takes, mistakes, and silence. Last year, I was in the middle of editing 64 videos for a 17-hour course I produce every year, and I decided that there had to be a better way. A quick search led me to Timebolt, and my life as a video editor has been changed forever. This is not a sponsored video, I pay for Timebolt with my own money. Timebolt is pure magic. With minimal effort, you can instantly remove silence and mistakes from your video. The edits can be imported into Premiere Pro or other video editing software, and you can even synchronize the edits across multicam clips. If you're a video editor who spends a lot of time editing, you need this software. It's a game changer. Honestly, I don't even want to share this with you because it gives me such an advantage over my competitors. But I will anyways because eventually the cat will be out of the bag. Because Timebolt has already created tutorials covering how to use this software in depth, this will be more of a demonstration of how I use it in my own workflow. First, you'll need to download and install Timebolt. There's a free version you can try, which does not expire. At least try it because I'm certain you'll be impressed. If you plan to buy this, you can save 20% with my coupon code DRAW. Once Timebolt has been installed, open the application. Before we edit anything, let's configure some of the settings using the gear icon in the top left. To make it easier to edit the video, you'll want to enable all of the audio preprocessing functions. This will make the audio sound like ass while you're working in Timebolt, but it won't sound like that when you publish the final video or move it into your editing software. Be sure to check auto detect filter values and make note of the other export settings because you may want to use them later. You'll need to restart to apply these changes. There's a button for that in the bottom left. Now we can start editing a video. I'll assume you have a raw recording you can use to follow along with me. Load that into Timebolt by dragging and dropping. You can work with video files or just audio on its own. That's right, podcasters, you can remove silence and pauses from your audio tracks as well. At first, I felt kind of overwhelmed by the settings and interface, but it's easier to use than it looks at first glance. Before we get too far in, let's scroll down a bit and just appreciate that it already shows that the output file is shorter by nearly 12 minutes. The original is 30 minutes, so I've already saved at least a multiple of that much time by not having to watch the video or scrub through the waveform to find silence, cut it, ripple, delete, etc. I'm so happy to never have to do that stuff again. At the top is the timeline. If your track uses multiple audio tracks, you can switch between those under Select Track. Beside that is the playback rate. I like to set this to 2x so that I can edit much faster. Beyond that, it becomes difficult to hear the audio, so I don't set this too high. And next to that is Preview Chunk. If your video is longer than one hour, it will be broken into chunks, so you need to switch to the next chunk to continue editing. Below that is the preview of your video, and beneath that is a waveform or a visualization of your audio. As I mentioned earlier, this has been pre-processed, so it will look and sound different than your original. That's okay. I'll widen my view by clicking the Expand Timeline button. The timeline is where you'll be making the edits to your track. The audio waveform helps you see where there is silence or mistakes. You will see either a red or green highlight, and this will alternate throughout the clip. The areas in red will be removed, and only the green areas will be exported. The gaps in between will be removed automatically. You can even preview how the video will look by playing it. As you can see, the red areas are skipped, and you only jump from green to the next green clip. If you click on the red or green bar, you will toggle it to the other state. The next waveform is a mistake, so I'll make it red to remove it. If you've spent a lot of time looking at waveforms, you can see mistakes without having to preview them. You could also add claps to your video to highlight mistakes or chapters of your video. There's also a stop button, and you can use common video editor keyboard shortcuts like spacebar to play and pause the video preview. You can get a full list of the keyboard shortcuts in the top left. There's a collection of buttons to the bottom right of the timeline. The red button creates a cut. This splits the highlighted section. I'll use this to trim off another mistake and turn it red. The next button can shift all of your cuts to left or right by a specific amount. This can come in handy if your audio or video are offset. As you can see, all of my edits can be moved around. I'll get the same cuts when I export to Premiere Pro. Apply Timeline Cuts will allow you to load saved edits, and the button next to that is used to save timeline cuts. Do this often to save your progress as a JSON file. In the middle of the buttons is a set decibel as sound level button. This will use the loudness value of where your playhead is located 
to set the threshold of where you want to begin removing silence. Clicking on this will enter the value into the silence detection options below. Timebolt offers some tips for how to set this value. It all depends on the audio you are using, so you'll want to experiment to find the right setting for your recordings. Once you set this, you shouldn't need to modify it going forward. In fact, I'd take a snapshot of the settings once you get them perfect. In my case, around 34.5 decibels is what works best for me. Anything below that will be automatically highlighted in red. Beneath that, you can tweak the silence detection options to choose how long of a silence to remove. I set this to 0.5 seconds. Ignore detections can be useful for cutting out short sounds like coughs. I find it works well for eliminating some of my false starts. Then you can set the right and left padding to make the cuts happen right where you want them. I find that 0.5 seconds on both sides works great for my editing style. You may want more or less room between clips, so feel free to tweak this. If you change any of these values, you'll need to reapply them to the timeline. In doing so, you will lose your edits to the timeline, so be sure to set these values first. Below that are the rendering options. While you can render the edited video from within Timebolt, I prefer to export just the cuts into Premiere Pro and continue editing. We'll come back to how to do that shortly. Although I don't use these features, you may want to. You can fast forward silences rather than remove them. You can apply transitions between cuts and you can add background music during the silenced areas. Here you can choose an output path for your rendered video. There's also a render queue for multiple videos and you can render as just a WAV file if you want to rip the audio. At the very bottom are the export options. This is where you can export just the cuts to your video editor of choice. In my case, I'm using Premiere Pro, so I'll choose to export as XML. You can also export cuts to iMovie, DaVinci Resolve, Camtasia, and Final Cut Pro. Once you've set this up, you can leave it like this and simply load in videos to edit. The bulk of the silence will be removed upon import, and you'll instantly save a good chunk of time, even if you don't refine your edits. I find that it's faster to refine the editing in Timebolt, so I do it all there rather than in Premiere Pro. All you really have to do is load a video, preview the video and look for any remaining mistakes, save your edits, and then click the export button. To make editing even faster, I'm using multi-touch on my display to scroll through the timeline and enable or disable parts. This flows a lot better, and I can even use two hands to edit if I like. I also use a stream deck, which is programmed with Timebolt shortcuts. The buttons are lined up next to each other to make it easy to edit without a lot of movement. There's a play pause button, a cut button, delete and next, or the O key will set the current clip to silence and then move to the next green clip. This greatly accelerates editing speed. Then I have a multi-action button with cut, delete, and next. This will make a cut, move the playhead back a couple steps, then set the clip to silence and move to the next clip. I use this when there is a mistake at the beginning of a clip I want to keep. I also have an undo button to undo the last edit. As you can see, I'm editing at light speed compared to how I used to do it. I no longer dread editing videos because the most tedious step has been eliminated, or at the very least streamlined. Now to get the edits into Premiere Pro is super easy. Just drag the XML file into a new project or template, then open the XML composition and there are your cuts with the silence automatically removed. It's beautiful, isn't it? I copy and paste this into my main composition and then finish off the editing. I may have to adjust the cuts here and there, but most of what I'm doing from here on out is just design work. Timebolt also includes a screen recorder. I haven't tried it, but it looks cool. Kind of basic for my needs, so I'm using XSplit, but you can also use OBS Studio to record your screen, which is free. If you're trying to cut multicam footage, there's a plugin for that. I won't go into too much detail on how to use it, but basically you line up your multiple camera tracks, synchronize them to the audio, and then you use the plugin to apply your saved cuts to each of the multiple camera tracks. The pros of Timebolt are obvious. It saves video editors time. Not like how shortcut keys save you time. This is automation. I've been using automation a lot lately, and it's done wonders for my productivity and morale. Video editing doesn't feel like as much of a chore anymore. And frankly, I won't go back to editing without Timebolt. I'm hooked. Thanks a lot, Doug. Now this wouldn't be a fair review without some cons. The clear con for most of you watching is going to be the price. It's probably not going to make sense to spend this much on such a lightweight app. But if you're editing videos for a living, it's absolutely worth it. Imagine life when you can spend one-third to one-half less time editing and make the same amount of money off your gigs. 
The other con is that the application feels kind of simple. That bothered me at first, but then I came to appreciate it. Still, I think the UI can use a bit of polish. How about a dark theme and maybe some options to save profiles with different silence detection settings and preferences? If you don't mind a few more suggestions, I'd really like to be able to zoom in and out of the waveform. Also, a keyboard shortcut to export as XML would be nice, since it disrupts my flow to have to scroll down to do that. Or you could make an accordion-style design where we can collapse the rendering section to bring the export buttons closer to the Save Cuts button. And if it's not too much, maybe add a markers feature so we can add markers, then export them as XML and have them appear in Premiere Pro. Even better would be to auto-detect the markers from a series of claps in the audio waveform. In conclusion, I can't help but wonder when or if automated editing is something that will be copied by Adobe or other video editing software. It certainly would be better just to get the same results from within Premiere Pro instead of having to use a secondary app. I want only the best for Timebolt, so I'm not wishing this upon them, but it is something to ponder. Also, it almost feels like there's a don't let the cat out of the bag mentality around this software, evident in how little I've heard about it. After all, anyone using this has an advantage over someone who isn't, and naturally that's a benefit Timebolt should promote. But at the same time, users are going to be reluctant to share this with their competitors and retain an advantage even if for a short time. Not good for Timebolt if they're trying to expand their user base. It's a catch-22 because once Timebolt becomes a success, it's no longer as substantial of an advantage for users. Don't get me wrong, the key benefit is that Timebolt saves you time, but part of the appeal for me is knowing that my competitors are still grinding away on stuff that I can do in mere seconds. On that note, if Timebolt sounds cool to you, please use my affiliate link before you purchase it so I can get a cut of the dough. After all, I didn't even want to tell you about this. That's all I have to say about Timebolt for now. Leave a comment on this video and let me know what you think of this software. And if you're interested in more content creator tutorials, be sure to subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.